Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. I just love coming to church on Sunday mornings. I love it and love you so much. And it was so fun um, listening to the words on the video from England this morning um, that Barbara's word on breakthrough <laughs> was just so tied in with what the Lord was speaking to us this morning. And also Mary Audrey's word confirmed my message for this morning and so it's just so great that you know we can be anywhere in the world but in sync with the spirit together we're just one big family in jesus as the kingdom of god moves forward so good morning to all of you and our online family again we just want to greet you and make you feel so welcome in this living room here uh, so that you don't feel separated on the other side of that computer screen but you are t totally one with us what a day we live in to be able to have that privilege um, through through media that we can expand our family worldwide so it's beautiful but this morning I want to share a teaching actually so there's going to be a lot of scriptures and a lot of building of the word this morning I love to preach but I also enjoy teaching and as a leader that serves in this house one of our responsibilities is to is to build the framework of the spirit of the kingdom inside the house so that the spirit of God can fill it and so that we'll all be able to align to it, okay? So that we'll all be able to walk in it. And one of the things that I know God wants for this house is for it to be a house of honor, amen? And that we'll build a culture of honor in our midst. So I'm going to share this morning a secret to successful kingdom advancement, and the secret is honor. <laughs> honor. Honor defined is to hold in respect or esteem. And it's interesting that um, the word kabod, which is a Hebrew word for glory, or it means weight, is often used in the scripture when honor is used. That's, you know, an interchangeable word there. And so that's really interesting that honor is so tied in with the glory of God, the weight of his presence. God loves honor and he hates dishonor. And I've seen over the years consistently um, consistently is that when when there is an individual who is an individual of honor and who exercises honor intentionally that doors open for them promotion comes from the Lord blessing comes upon their life and yet I say the exact opposite when a person is given to dishonor when they dishonor in their lives and dishonor leaders dishonor their parents dishonor you know the people in their midst dishonor the the government leaders is that the exact opposite happens it's like a curse comes on their life and doors are closed i've even seen people with tremendous uh, anointings and ministry callings but because they are people of dishonor their anointings never break open they never get established, and yet they've got, you know, so many gifts to release to the body. So honor promotes and dishonor demotes. Honor blesses and dishonor curses. Honor builds strong relationships. Dishonor destroys relationships. Honor is pleasant, and dishonor is unpleasant. So we're going to take a look at the scriptures. There's going to be a lot of scriptures today because I'm going to be um, teaching this message. But the first thing we want to look at is what does the Bible say about who we are to honor? When he talks about honor, who are we to honor? And the first one, of course, is obvious. It's God himself. God himself is a God to be honored and it's so beautiful coming together here on Sunday mornings we gather together and we honor the Lord with our, our our presence before him but also in our worship and our attention that we give him it says in Revelation 5 verse 12 that the elders in heaven were saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing in Revelation 7.12, it says that they also were declaring, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And in 1 Timothy 1.17, it says, Now to the King eternal, immortal, 
invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So God is to be honored, and not just on Sunday mornings when we're together, and not just in our songs, but in everything that we do, in all that we are, that we would give him honor in and through our lives. The next one that we're going to look at this morning is our father and mother. In Exodus 20, verse 12, it says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. And in Matthew 15, 4, it says, For God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. Woo! That's, um, that's pretty clear, and it's scary. <laughs> and, but God is very clear about honoring father and mother. And I know that a lot of you have had maybe fathers and mothers that maybe in your mind don't deserve to be honored and yet he didn't he didn't qualify it by saying just honor the good father and mother you know if you have got a good father and mother honor them but if you've got a bad father and mother don't honor them he didn't qualify it like that he just said you honor your father and your mother because when you position yourself in honor it positions you for blessing it's the first commandment with a promise attached to it. And it says, if you honor your father and your mother, then it will go well for you. You will live long in the land that the Lord gives you, which is the kingdom, the land of his promises, the land of his goodness, the land of his abundant life. So when you honor your father and mother, it positions you in the blessing of the Lord. Now, there are some situations, and I know that even in this room and those of you in our online family, that you have probably had maybe situations in your family where you've been hurt by your father and mother. Or maybe they have damaged you. In fact, in some extreme cases, maybe even there was sexual abuse by a father or a mother. You know, we've ministered to many people who have experienced those things, and that's a difficult thing. So God's not saying to honor your parents for their deeds. He's just saying to honor them for who they are. And so, of course, you can't empower an evil. In fact, if there is, you know, are, are things happening by a parent that, that, that are unlawful or or immoral or anything like that. Those things should be reported. And that's not dishonor. That's actually an act of love so that you can keep them from, from doing more harm and keeps them from sinning more. You know, that in love that you can protect them and others from being hurt. So it's an act of love. And it has to be done carefully and without, you know, the the anger that would be destructive in you. You know, you don't want to destroy yourself more, but there's things that do need to be addressed sometimes in the actions of parents, especially if it's illegal activity or immoral activity that would hurt children. It needs to be lovingly confronted in the truth of God. But even with that, we are told to honor. And so I think that sometimes our honor is simply by avoiding dishonor. My father used to say to me, he says, Patricia, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, right? It's better not to say anything if you can't say anything nice. And so sometimes honoring a parent is simply to not dishonor them, right? And so some of you might be in that boat. We know that with the case of Noah, that um, he had one son who uncovered his nakedness. And he was cursed. He was cursed for uncovering his father's nakedness, for exposing him when the other sons covered him. Okay? And so God, God wants us to walk in honor, and the honor of father and mother is really important. And that goes for your spiritual parents too. Um, most of us, hopefully, have had some spiritual parents in our life who have nurtured us. And, but... but no one's perfect. No one here has had perfect natural parents or, or perfect spiritual parents. There's been areas that have been a blessing to you and areas that haven't been a blessing to you, but God is saying to honor, honor them, okay? Another um, 
uh, group that God wants honored is the elderly. And in Leviticus 19.32, it says, you shall rise up before the gray-headed. I just want you to know that underneath this, this, this dye, there's some gray hair, okay? I just, <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? You shall rise up before the gray-headed and honor the aged, and you shall revere your God. I am the Lord. So he's saying, you know, honor, honor the elderly. Now, when we were growing up, we were taught to honor the elderly. It was, you know, just in our schools, in our home. I mean, it was a generation that was taught to honor the elderly. But today, it's not as much taught to honor the elderly. And in fact, in, in this generation, we see a lot of elder abuse. We see elderly people being taken advantage of financially. I mean, uh, Ron and I were watching some documentaries on that. It, it just like, it just breaks your heart when you see what people have done to elderly people and taken all their savings and everything and, you know, with these scams and no conscience against it whatsoever, you know, and leaving people in their old years absolutely bankrupt, elder abuse. Even amongst family members, where, where the elderly members of the family have been actually abused and taken advantage of rather than honored. Oftentimes we see in the day that we live in that the elderly are not looked after by the family. Sometimes they're just put away in a home and forgotten and never visited again. That's, that's not honoring, is it? And we see nursing homes all around us, in this region even, where there are, 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 are elderly in homes by themselves that never get visited. And this is not an isolated case. It's like, it's, it's, it's across the board, the elderly are not being honored. And God says that we are to honor the elderly. We are to, to look after them. And as a house, I want us to move more into that kind of an outreach. We did an outreach this summer with an extended care home uh, that has elderly in it, but it was, you know, people with all kinds of different challenges. We went with Steve and Lisa Swanson, and, and it's really beautiful to reach out to those who are forgotten to those who are not being honored, to those who are not being blessed, to be able to reach out and touch their lives because this is honoring to God. And as a house, I would love to see a regular outreach to the elderly, especially those who are in homes who are, who are isolated and forgotten. Because even ones that can't respond themselves, they, they hear you and they feel you. And, and that love and that honor they're shown pleases God and it touches them. Another one that the scripture mentions is widows. And this is widowers as well. It says in 1 Timothy 5, 3, honor widows who are widows indeed. And we have widows and widowers in, in this house. And they need to be honored. And they need to be loved on and esteemed and blessed, you know, invited out and, 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 and given, given affirmations and and sometimes they need uh, finance. Sometimes they're not looked after financially very well. And, and we need to reach out to them. And I want to encourage you that just be sensitive to the Lord on that. Sometimes you just, you know, it's good to give a little Pentecostal handshake once in a while with a little blessing inside of it for someone that is in need. But we need to, to honor, honor our widows and our widowers. Church leaders is also taught in scripture that we are to, to honor church leaders. 1 Timothy 5.17, the elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, and 13, But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction, and that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. And so in, in our house here, we have many leaders, many church leaders. It, you know, it's not just a few people that can serve the whole mandate that is here. So we have leaders in different capacities. Some are more visible than others. Aren't you glad that we have an amazing worship team with great worship leaders and prayer with great 
prayer leaders. And, and aren't you happy that we have children's leaders in this house that care for and pour into the children? Administrative leaders in this ministry who, who are sometimes never known because they're behind the scenes. What about the Ministry of Helps leaders who are here before anyone else gets here and who's set up the place and put the signs out and all of it? These are all leaders that need to be esteemed. Some of them are more visible than others, and the Bible actually teaches to give more honor to the invisible ones. And we need to do that. Like people like Sharon Us, and some of you maybe have never met her, and you need to because she is very, very precious. She's an intercessor, and she leads the nursery uh, age children under two. And every single Sunday, she sacrifices being in this worship service to be over there holding children in her arms and loving those children and praying over those children and declaring their destiny over them. And that is amazing. And it says in the Bible that, that leaders, they are to be esteemed. They are to be honored. This is right in God. And as we're building a house, we want this to be a house of honor where we so appreciate each other. We've got pastoral leaders here that are serving the flock day and night. Intercessors serving the flock day and night. Media teams that come in here early and set up and serve. All kinds of volunteers who are just, just serving this house and many of them in leadership. We have connect group leaders and leaders in Sunday schools, so many different leaders in this house. And the word says very clearly, esteem your leaders, honor them. And especially those who, you know, are are leading the flock, giving account for the flock, who are preaching and teaching the word and working hard. It says working hard at it. This is not about just, you know, lazy people, you know, that that, of course, we don't have any lazy people in our flock. I, I, I don't know one. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, the, these, these are people who are diligent before the Lord to seek the Lord on behalf of this flock. And he says, give them double honor. And so we want to be aware of this, is that this is what pleases God. And you'll notice something here, that it doesn't say, you know, just if they're perfect and flawless. It just says to honor them because of their labors. And I want to really get this through to our hearts, is that we don't want to have any place within this house for critical spirits. We don't want to have any place in this house for judgmental attitudes. We want to have honor in this house. Now, there's going to be times when something has to be addressed. If there's, you know, if someone's stumbling along in an attitude that is not right or, or an activity or words that are not right, we're not going to just sit back and let them continue to stumble along. In love, we're going to address that for their good. Not because we're ticked off or not because we're being critical, but for their good, we want to address that and bring, bring them up higher, right? That's what, that's what we do for one another in love, in humility, doing that. So we want to leave room for that, but not for a critical spirit. Because like even in, in the political realm, there's a lot of Christians that will slam leaders like terribly with their mouth in an absolutely critical, critical attitude. It's all across the board. And if you go on Facebook, you don't have to read through too many posts to find out even Christian leaders who are leading the flock worldwide are being slammed and criticized and judged openly. And then underneath there, there's just tons of other posts who are in agreement with dishonoring them. And this is not going to happen in this house. Amen? None of you are going to put posts on your Facebook that are negative and critical and cruel. We are going to build, we are going to build the body. And if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. If you see someone failing, do something about it to help them. If you don't know them, maybe they're halfway around the world ministering in another nation or something, pray for them. 
you can at least undergird them that way. But that's honorable when you handle a situation like that. That's honorable. But it is not honorable to hold bitterness in the heart and resentment and, and, and then badmouth leaders of any kind. It's just, it's just not going to happen in this house. Amen. We're, we're all going to protect that so that we can have honor in the house. And believe me, we're all about addressing things that need to be addressed, but we don't want to have, um, we don't want to cultivate a culture of dishonor. We want to cultivate a culture of honor for each other. Another area, and I've kind of alluded to it already, is those in authority over you. God wants you to honor those in authority over you, such as government leaders, bosses, project leaders. In 1 Timothy 6.1, it says, All who are under the yoke as slaves are to regard their own masters as worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and our doctrine will not be spoken against. So let's say that you're in a workplace and your boss is nasty. What this is saying that irregardless of how nasty they are, you are to honor them. You are not to badmouth them with other employees. You are not to go and write Facebook posts about them. You are not to do any of that. It says you are to honor them so that the gospel isn't going to be spoken against and so that God himself won't be looked upon in a bad way. We are to be absolutely blameless in this sense, that we are to be people of honor. I love the example of David and Saul, and I, I'm not going to read this whole portion of Scripture, but you can look it up later. It's out of 1 Samuel 24, verses uh, 2 to 13. But it tells the story about how David had an opportunity to literally take Saul out. Now, here's the deal. Saul was the appointed king. And you know what? He wasn't the greatest king, but he was the king. Okay, David was anointed as king, but he wasn't appointed yet. He wasn't in position yet, but he was anointed by God as king. So he could have flaunted his, his authority and thought, well, God anointed me as king, and you know, you're acting like a jerk, Saul, and you are not treating me well, and you're jealous of me, and you're trying to take me out, and you're speaking evil of me all the time, so I'm just going to let you have it, because I have been anointed by God as the king right? But he didn't do that. Now, he had opportunity to take him out. You know, he got that little piece of, of uh, cloth off of his cloak. But he went to Saul afterwards. He actually, actually repented from even taking the piece of the garment. He repented very quickly about that because he had touched the anointed of God in a negative way. And he did not take his life he did not harm him in any way. In fact, he said to Saul, why, why are you doing this to me? I've only honored you. I've only done good to you. And Saul had to make his own choice before God. But David refused to dishonor him in that way. And I think that the reason why David got promoted like he did, I mean, he was the king who was called, you know, he, he is a man after my own heart, God said. He was a man of honor, and David was greatly honored because he sowed honor, and he passed his honor test. And you will always be watched by God before you go into promotion about if you pass your honor test. Because if you fail an honor test, you will not be able to properly stand in your next place well. You will fail in that place. God wants you to always pass the tests of honor. And you will be tested. And you might think in your mind, well, that person doesn't deserve my honor. David could have said that. He could have said, Saul doesn't deserve to be honored. He's a jerk. He's doing everything wrong. He's a bad king. He's only thinking about himself. He's not even interested in the, in the agenda of God. He's just off. And David could have felt that he had a right to say that, but he knew he didn't. Because if he did take that attitude within his heart towards Saul, he would have failed the honor test. But instead, he passed the honor test. And he, he held that honor test strong 
right through to the finish because even after that, he didn't become king right away. He had to still walk that out. He could have thought, well, I just know who I am. I'm the next king of Israel, and you know, you should be ousted, and I should be put in. But he didn't go there. He clothed himself in humility and honored the king, even though in the natural, it doesn't look like he, he deserved honor at all. And so I love that. I love that story. And I, I love the example that David gave us. I want to be like that. I want to be like that. Okay, next we're to honor each other. In Romans 12.10, be devoted to one another in brotherly love and give preference to one another in honor. Philippians 2.3 says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem or honor the other better than themselves. Wow, that's an awesome an awesome principle to live by. And in this house, that's what we want. You know, one of my most favorite um, uh, resources on honor is that of Rob Packer's book on honor. It's really good. And his teaching on honor, it is so good. But it talks about the way you value each other. You see, if you have value, you know, if, if you value something, you will, you will take care of it. You will honor it. For example, if you had a three-carat diamond ring, <laughs> you see the value in that. You're not going to be careless with that diamond ring. You're not just going to take it off your finger and forget where you put it, okay? Because you value that ring. But if you had a ring out of a Cracker Jack box, I don't even know if they have Cracker Jacks anymore. They used to when we were kids, but... Do they? Okay, so if you get a ring out of there, you're not going to value it the same. You know, you might put it on, forget where you put it. You might, you know, put it in a bucket full of bleach or whatever. You don't care because it doesn't have the, the value on it that the three-carat diamond has. But whatever you value, you will honor. And God wants us to learn to value each other as he values us. When he looks at each of you as individuals, he values you beyond anything that you could ever know. In fact, so much so that he was willing to give everything for you. He was willing to give absolutely everything to you because you have such great value to him. Now, when we look at each other and we can't see value, just ask the Lord to reveal it. And he will show you the value. You might look at a person and oh, man, you know, what value do they have? They're losers or whatever. Not in God's eyes, they're not. And when you look through his eyes and ask him to reveal his heart for that person, it'll change the way that you see them. And if you can change the way that you see them and see the value in them, you will honor them. It's easy to honor what you value. Easy to honor what you value. And God wants us to see the pure gold in each other. He wants us to see the potential. He wants us to call up the potential in each other. And it's one of the, the greatest ways as you're raising children is don't tell them how bad they are. You know, don't, don't point out all the bad things that they're doing and all their mistakes and you better fix this and fix that and do this and do that because you're just not making the mark. If you do that, you'll destroy your child. Everyone, every parent knows that. And if you don't, you'll find out if you operate in that. You'll destroy their self-image. You'll destroy everything about them. But when you start speaking into them, who they really are. And when you start disciplining them by calling them up into who they are, it transforms the way they live and the way that they grow up. They'll grow up straight because they're, they're being valued. They, you know, if you feel valued by someone, you live differently than if you feel that you're despised by people. Have you ever gone into an environment where you felt despised? It's just like you, you know, you want to hide, you, you, you know, you, you fumble, you, you know, you're not yourself, you don't rise up in confidence. But when you go into a place and you know you're valued and loved, it just pulls up in you the fullness of who you are. And as a house, that's what we want to do. We, we make mistakes. Come on, look at the person next to you. And then look at yourself. And do you see that there's a possibility that maybe there's some mistakes? Maybe there's some flaws? Maybe, just maybe? 
because we're part of the human race, right? But like, if we can cover each other with the love of God and begin to honor each other, we'll see each other grow and it'll be so beautiful. And again, I'm not saying to ignore things that need to be addressed. That's how we grow. And if, and if you need to have things addressed in you, then, then just embrace it. Love it. Grow by it. It's good for you. Okay, let's look at how we honor. I mean, there's many other examples in scriptures, like even within marriage and, and things like that. But let's uh, look now to how do we honor. And first of all, let's look at honoring God. We honor him with our sincere worship. Amen. In Revelation 4, verse 11, it says, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. And so we want to worship God, not just in our song on Sunday morning, but we want to worship him as a lifestyle because he is worthy, that we put him first, we honor him above all else. I was in a meeting just recently, and we were singing a beautiful song, a beautiful worship song, and it was about, oh, Lord, come and surround us with your love. And, of course, we all want that, and I want that, and we should want that, right? But as I was singing it, I started weeping. I just thought, Lord, I just want to surround you with mine. I just... I. I just want to forget about me right now. I just want to surround you with my love. I want to just take this whole worship time and just surround you with my love and pour my love into you and focus on what I can give to you in this moment. And I could feel his heart warm. I could feel his heart so touched. He felt so honored by that. So worship him because he is worthy. Another way that we, we honor God is in our tithes and offerings. In Proverbs 3, 9, it says, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. And so it's very clear that this is a way that we can honor God. And as a house, we do. We really believe in that and we honor God. We want to honor God with the first and the best because he is worthy. In Malachi 1.6, God talks about polluted offerings. And he says, A son honors his father and a servant his master. Then if I'm a father, where is my honor? And if I'm a master, where is my respect? Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who despise my name. But you say, how have we despised your name? I would never want the, the, the Lord to come into this house and say, you know, I'm... I'm your father, but where's my honor? I'm your master, but where's my honor? Ah, oh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that create just the deepest pain in you if the Lord ever came into this house to say that? And so we're not going to ever let that happen because we're going to, to worship him with a pure heart. They were polluting their offerings. The third thing is keeping the truth and speaking the truth in love. And, you know, in the world that we're living in, oh, my gosh, the devil is attacking the truth. He wants the people of God to come off the word of God. And he's, he's, he's challenging, oh, really? You know, you guys believe that? You know, you can be bigger than that. This is a liberal society. We accept everyone. Are you trying to say that God doesn't accept everyone? Are you trying to say that, that you know, God hates this, this person or hates that person? Oh, how, how terrible your God is and how terrible you are. And he tries to twist the word into making it look like God isn't even a loving God. And if we're not careful... We'll get backed into a corner. I just heard recently of some leaders who are changing their whole mindset because one of the, the, the big things on the political agenda right now, of course, is sexual orientation. But these are Christian leaders that used to believe the word regarding sexual orientation have now changed their mind on it. Yeah. They changed their mind on it. And we have whole churches that are changing their mind on it. And I don't know what got into them. There's some kind of a deception that's swirling to keep us from the word of God. And it's not honoring. If we don't honor his word, we're not honoring him. And we need to keep his word. And as a house, you know, if, if everyone in the church left because they didn't want to keep the word, I would still, whatever remnant is here, we will worship him with a remnant. But we will keep his word. 
I'm just glad that we're a house that loves the word and loves the truth. In Malachi 2, verses 1 to 8, God says this, And now this commandment is for you, O priests. If you do not listen, if you do not take heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send the curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. And indeed, I have cursed them already, because you are not taking it to heart. And the way that that works is, inside of honor is blessing, but inside of dishonor is curse. So it's just the way it's created so that when you step into dishonor, you're actually stepping into to curse. Behold, I'm going to rebuke your offspring. This goes down through the generation line. And I will spread refuse on your faces and refuse on your feast, and you will be taken away with it. Then you will know that I've sent this commandment to you that my covenant may continue with Levi, which is the priesthood, says the Lord of hosts, and we are his priests today. My covenant with him was one of life and peace, and I gave them to him as an object of reverence, so he re revered me and stood in awe of my name. He was honored by the priesthood. True instruction was in his mouth, and unrighteousness was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and he turned many back from iniquity." Turn them away from sin. For the lips of a priest should preserve knowledge, and men should seek instruction from his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But as for you, you have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by the instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. So as priests, and you are all priests and kings in God, according to Revelation 1.6, so as the priesthood, as the royal priesthood of God, we in this house will speak the truth of righteousness that will align people to that truth. We're not going to compromise it. We're going to speak the truth. Amen? Because that is what is honoring to God. The next one is obedience. Obedience to God and also to our leaders. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. So this is talking about church leaders, actually, to obey the leaders who are watching over your soul. But you could translate it, really, into any area. So if you are part of a church and you don't like the leadership decisions or the leadership beliefs, then you humbly and with honor, you leave because you can't submit to it, right? You're just in honor. It's, you know, you just, you just humble yourself and go, but you don't cause trouble inside and you don't step into disobedience because to do so is to violate honor. And to violate honor is to bring a curse on your life. And it will bring contention and strife and division in the house. And you will have your name on that for producing it. Woo. And so let's say that you are, you are in a church and the pastor, like just this one I learned about recently, starts preaching that same-sex marriage is totally fine. And you're sitting there thinking... Oh my gosh, that is so not fine. And you, you go and talk to the pastor with respect and say, Pastor, the word says this and this. Can you explain to me where you're getting this from? Maybe he gives the, the discourse on it. And you say, you know, I am, I, am, I, I am so sorry. I love you, but I cannot agree with that. I'm not in agreement with it. And I cannot, I cannot support it. And so I'm going to be leaving this church. I, I love you. I'll be praying for you. I'm not going to speak evil against you, but I need to speak the truth in love. And so I can't agree with this. So does that make sense? But you do it in honor. You don't, you know, you don't do it in dishonor. God's going to look after that. There's a, there's a testing. He is putting things out there to, to, to discover who the sheep and who the goats are, who the wheat and who the tares are. And he does it with the plumb line of his word. And we're going to stay on the plumb line of his word. But 
even in a work situation, let's say your boss is making you do something that you have a conviction about. Maybe he wants you to lie. Maybe he wants you to, to cook the books or something, right? Well, you can't do that, can you? You can't do that. It would violate your conscience. But how are you going to handle that one in honor when the word says, obey your leaders? But you can't obey unrighteousness, right? So you're going to have to have a talk with that boss and say, you know what? I cannot cook the books for you. I cannot do that. And I, and I will not do that. I honor you, but I cannot obey that because it's against my conviction. If he says, well, you know, if you're going to stay here, you have to cook the books, then you're going to have to say, with all respect for you, and I will pray for you, and I will love you, but I'll hand in my resignation now because I cannot obey that. In honor, you would do it, right? In honor. Can you see the difference? And, you know, if you stay there and say, do you know this guy is asking me to cook the books, and this is so terrible, and you start spreading strife inside the house, but you're going to go, and you're going to go before God, and you're going to pray for that man's salvation, for his deliverance, for a revelation, and you're going to let God deal with it. Now, if it's a, a dishonest thing that's going on, you might have to tell your boss, you know, you're doing something illegal here, and unfortunately, because I'm aware of this, I'm going to have to report this. You know, there's, there's some things that you have to do that too when it comes to, to unrighteousness. But you always keep honor within your heart. Okay, when we're looking at, at honoring others, here's some things that will help you. Look for the good in each other and celebrate each other. Look for the good in each other. You know, you might say, well, I really struggle with that person. Well, don't look at the things you struggle with. Look, at the, look for things that you can honor. Look for things that you can celebrate. You can always find something to celebrate in a person. One of the things that we do by tradition is we celebrate birthdays, don't we? That's, that's an act of honor, is to celebrate a birthday. Or Mother's Day, Father's Day. You know, when you come to church, we should be honoring mothers on Mother's Day and fathers on Father's Day, because it's an opportunity to celebrate and to honor. And we could probably do much better at that one. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that we have to grow in, and I think that's one of them. Um, but you know, just special occasions is that is that we can we can grow in honor with one another. I uh, with birthdays. I, I mean, I even forget my own birthday. You know, I, I've, I've forgotten my kids' birthdays. Times I forgot one of my grandchildren's one time. I I really need help with that, and it it's not honoring. Like when you know, like when someone close to you you forget their birthday, it hurts them, doesn't it? You know why? Because the expectation is that it's a day of honor. And so that honor needs to be there. So that's something that we can cultivate. Another one is prefer each other. Prefer each other. I, I love the way our team is. I mean, it's just funny sometimes. Even out in a restaurant, people will be fighting over the bill on who's going to pay it because they're preferring each other. It's just so beautiful. I love it. Um, Number seven, speak well of each other, especially if you have an opportunity to speak well of someone in public or when they're not even there. That is so beautiful when you, you can honor someone when they aren't even there. Because sometimes we can manipulate through honor too. Oh, someone's here, so I'll speak well of them. But then behind the scenes, we're not honoring them, right? But when you honor someone behind the scenes to people, it's beautiful. Sometimes we'll say something nice to a person because we know it's right to do, but then we'll go talk to someone else, all the negativity about them, and that's dishonoring. So it cancels out your honor. We want to have honor on every side. Another one is to give personal gifts and offerings, like the, the Queen of uh, Sheba did, the, the example of the Queen of Sheba. When she went to visit uh, King Solomon, she brought him lots of gifts because she was honoring him, right? And so we can honor. Sometimes, don't you feel honored when someone gives you a gift? It's like, wow, they were thinking of me. They were, they were blessing me. <clears throat> and so we can look for opportunities or, you know, to give little uh, cards with words of appreciation on it and things like that. Um, Caring for, caring for others. I mentioned widows earlier. You know, sometimes they just need a little offering given to them to give them hope and to, to you know, give them, you know, give them a sense of value. It's beautiful. 
Okay, let's go into how do we obtain honor. And the first thing I want to mention is no entitlement. In other words, we don't walk around and say, I'm the president, I deserve your honor. You know, I'm the pastor, I need to be honored. You know, you better honor me, bow down and, you know, give me gifts and give me offerings and stuff like that. And I know that that sounds ridiculous, but it's out there, okay? It's out there, but it's not going to be in here, okay? Cancel that one out right now. So we don't want entitlement. I've heard people say, oh, I deserve a special seating. Where's my special seating? You know, because after all, I'm pastor so-and-so. Or I'm on the board of directors of whatever. Well, who cares? You know, it, it, it's like, come on, you know. Honor has to come from a person as a gift towards you. You don't demand honor. You don't command it. This isn't, honor has nothing to do with entitlement issues. And sometimes we have so much entitlement, even like, you know, going out to speak. I always train the people that I'm mentoring is when you go out to serve people out there on the road, you don't put demands on them. You don't say, you have to give me this first class ticket. You have to give me a five star hotel. You have to give me this much honorarium. You have to do this. You have to do that. You know, I always train that you go out as a servant. And if you go to honor the people that you're going to serve, Honor will come back to you. Even if it doesn't come back through those people, it'll come back through some other way, but you don't demand it. You don't have entitlement issues concerning this. Okay, so, and also remember this. If you're given honor, receive it. Because then you have something to give back to God. You have something to offer back to God. At the end of the day, we're going to take all of our crowns and pour them out at his feet. All the honor, all honor goes to him. It's not, oh, well, I'll give 80% to God and keep 20%. No, all honor goes back to him because he's the one that gives the honor to begin with. And so you don't let honor that people are giving you, which is a beautiful, beautiful gift. It's an undeserved gift. And when they give it to you, you know that it belongs to God. It's something that you can give back to God. Don't let it birth pride in you. Okay, so how do we obtain it? Number one, honor God. In 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, last part of the verse, it says, Those who honor me, I will honor. Simple. If you honor God, he will honor you. And those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. Number two, be full of grace. A gracious person attains honor. Proverbs eleven sixteen. Number three, humility. Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, but humility goes before honor. Proverbs 22, verse 4. The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches honor, and life. Wow. Humility. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride will bring him low, but a humble heart will obtain honor. And I love living at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross, there's no entitlement issues. You're just at the foot of the cross looking at everything that Jesus laid down for you. Everything that Jesus did to give you life. And what he did was he died. What he did was he became your sin in exchange for giving you his righteousness. And when you look at what he did, there was no entitlement there. He wasn't on that cross saying, come on, you guys, you better honor me or else. Because I am the Messiah. Come on, honor me. When they were all shouting, crucify him, crucify him. He just humbled himself. He didn't need to. He was God. He was perfect. He didn't need to. But he humbled himself and gave forgiveness and gave himself and gave it all to us that we would live. And because he humbled himself more than anyone has ever humbled themselves, because he humbled himself, he's been exalted above all else and his name is above every name in the whole universe. Because to the degree that you will humble yourself is to the degree of honor will be given. You don't go after the honor. You go after humility and honor will come. 
You serve people and honor will come. You love people and honor will come. You don't demand honor. God can demand honor. He can demand it. You cannot demand honor. All we really deserve outside of Jesus Christ is eternal hell. It's all we really deserve. But because of his love for us, he has exalted us in him. And there's so much entitlement out there that is based on this prideful attitude. I I deserve it. I should have this. I should have it now. I should have this position, that position, this money, this kind of treatment. Because after all, I am. Well, you are not I am. There is only one I am. Amen? We humble ourselves. In Luke 14... 8 to 11, it says, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this man. And then in disgrace, you proceed to occupy the last place. But when you are invited, go and recline at the last place, so that when the one who has invited you comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will have honor in the sight of all who are at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And so it's, it's, it's just looking. When you have the mindset of a servant, a servant would never just march up to the front seat and say, I'm going to sit up here in the front and and I want a place of honor and I want you to treat me with honor because a servant's role is to bless others. And so they take, they take the back seat. They take the lowest place. And this scripture is saying, if you will take that low place, honor will come to you. You'll be invited up, maybe. And if you don't get invited up, I was listening to someone just the other day, they were, they were so hurt because they didn't get honored in the way that they wanted to be honored. And, and I was trying to share with them, you know, if you relinquish your right to be honored, you won't be hurt anymore. <laughs> honor is coming to those who humble themselves. But it's, it's not just the honor of man. It's the honor of God. And this is in the eternal realm when we stand before him and he will honor us. Those who have never been honored in the earth. I remember when Jill Austin went to be with the Lord and I I actually watched in the spirit as she passed over and sure enough, it was at the exact moment she was pronounced expired. But I saw it in the spirit and I saw her being received into heaven with so much celebration. And I started to weep. And I said, Lord, why didn't we not honor her in earth like she's being honored in heaven? Because she was not honored in earth as she should have been. In fact, in many ways, she was mistreated. But in heaven, I saw her being honored. I was just weeping. I said, oh, God, if only we could have honored her like that. But she never demanded honor in her life from people. She never demanded it. But... In that glory realm, there it all was. And that's where it counts. That's where it counts. If you spend all your honor in the earth on man's honor, maybe there won't, maybe it'll, maybe your bank account will be empty in heaven. But if you live your life in humility and in servanthood, it'll, it'll release a bank account full of honor and glory for you. And that, that is worth living, living for. I was in a situation recently where I was speaking at a meeting, but I I wasn't the keynote speaker. I was just asked to share. And um, so during a break, oh, I had to go to the bathroom so bad. And um, but the lineup for the the restroom was really long. And so someone had said to me, "Well, we'll just go into the speaker's uh, green room. There's one in there." And I said, "No, I've I've not been invited." there. I'm not an official speaker. I'm just here speaking. And so I'll just stand in line, line here. And uh, it was a long line. And people were saying, oh, here, you, you, you go ahead of us. And I thought, no, I, I'm, I'm well able to wait here. Now, there's times if my schedule really needed to get me out in a place, I would maybe take up that, that opportunity to, to go ahead. But I had time, so I could wait just like everyone else. They had stood in line. I'm no you know, better than they are, I need to stand in line too. Amen? And so 
um, you know, just little things like that, I think sometimes we can uh, just grow in honor by even those little things, when we think about those little things like, that we that we so into humility and servanthood. Number four, stay away from strife. Proverbs 20, verse 3. Keep away from strife is an honor. Keeping away from strife is an honor for a man, but any fool will, will quarrel. <laughs> I'm going to go through these very quickly. Number five, pursue righteousness and loyalty. Loyalty. Oh, I love loyalty. Proverbs 21, 21. He who pursues righteousness and loyalty finds life, righteousness, and honor. Number six, doing good. Make right choices. Have integrity. Romans 2, verses 7 and 10. To those who by perseverance in doing good seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but glory and honor and peace to everyone who does good good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So do good. Number seven is generosity. Proverbs 22, 9, he who is generous will be blessed for he gives some of his food to the poor. You're honored in generosity. Number eight, sowing. Proverbs eleven twenty five. 25, the generous man will be prosperous and he who waters will himself be watered. So if you're honoring others, well, you're going to be honored. Amen. What you sow is what you reap. And then finally, loving well. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 in the Living Bible. Let love be your highest goal. Let it be your greatest aim. People who love well are honored. It's easy, isn't it? It's easy to honor someone who, who loves so well. You want to honor them. Everything in you wants to honor them. They're not demanding it. They're just loving. They're giving themselves to you so that you can be more blessed than you were before. So this house, this house is a house of honor. I decree it and declare it. We honor God well. We honor each other well. We're going to honor government leaders well. Whoever is in power, whether we like them or not, we're going to honor them. If we can't say anything nice, we're not going to say anything at all. We're going to go to prayer, and we're going to pray for those who are not aligned with the word yet. We're going to decree that they will be aligned with the word right? And we're going to grow in this together. None of us are perfect in this. But what I'd like us to do right now in response to this word is just bow, <coughs> bow in a word of prayer and invite the Holy Spirit to reveal to you any area of your life where you have walked in dishonor. Maybe it's been toward your parents or a government leader, maybe you haven't shown honor on Facebook, <laughs> maybe within the house of God to leaders in the body of Christ, maybe you've had critical opinions of them and didn't guard your heart, but ask the Lord to convict you of any dishonor that you have sown. Anything in your heart that isn't pure in that sense. Ask him to convict you and reveal it to you. Thank you, Jesus. And I just want to encourage you to take even more time later and maybe get a note paper out. I, I, I think you might be surprised. I was surprised. You might be surprised at, at how much dishonor you've sown. Sometimes it's so subtle. We don't even think of it as being dishonor, but it is. And it's so beautiful to get those things under the blood. And later, before you go, receive communion. We've got the communion up here. And if you're at home, take communion at home. And just receive the washing, the cleansing of the blood of Christ, but also partake of the honor that Jesus himself walks in. Because he'll fill you with it afresh. And now, let's just take those areas that God has revealed to you and ask him to forgive you. Turn away from them. Go in another direction. And then say, God, forgive me for being dishonoring in these areas. Forgive me. And the scripture says that when you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, all of it. Hallelujah. 
You don't have to walk in guilt. You've got a, a clean slate to start all over with. And at the end of the day, you can do it again. At the end of tomorrow, you can do it again and again and again as you continue to be cleansed of any dishonor in your life and you keep the slate clean and you continue to sow honor. And now, Lord, fill each one with the honor, Jesus, that you walked in. Perfect honor. And I thank you, Lord, that even today, as this word goes forth, that we say yes to your word. We say yes to your word for our lives, and we say yes to your word for this house. And we declare this house as a house of honor. We declare this house as a house that will honor you, honor your leaders, honor each other, honor the invisible, hidden parts, honor through value. We decree it and declare it over this house in Jesus' name. Now, one of the ways, of course, that we demonstrate honor in this house is we give God the first and the best. We give God the first and the best of everything. And so we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings to honor God this morning. If you're making out checks, make them payable to Shiloh. If you're watching online on our shilohfellowship.com, uh, there's a tab there for giving, and you can just press that. And uh, there's a Patricia King Ministry app that you can get, that you can get set up for online giving. It's very secure giving. And you can give by text. Just text PKM to 77977. Okay, so that's ways that you can um, be served in your giving this morning. So, Father, as we prepare our offering, we thank you that you are worthy of it. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all, Lord Jesus. And we're just asking, Lord, that as we honor you today, that you'll receive the love that is in this gift, that you will truly be honored through this gift today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Wow. <laughs>